So maybe I'll just uh, start. So yeah, so today I won't be talking about moduli spaces and Fuchsian groups, although we'll see some elements that will be, uh, you know, sort of there. Um, so I should mention that um, um, some of this kind of arose through, I'll be talking about something that's sort of ongoing research, okay? So and some of it is um, some discussions I'm having with uh, my colleague, um, Professor, Professor Dutta, um, and there's also an, uh, some kind of um, associated um, uh, sort of collaboration of um, um, Vasudev with, uh, uh, with um, Dipendu, who's here in the uh, audience. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll be kind of mentioning some of this, you know, work that's happening right now. So, yeah, so the whole, the, the topic for today are these uniform tailings of the hyperbolic plane, okay? So, here's a picture, and if you want a closer look, okay, so this is a, a, a uniform tiling, which means that if you look at every, so this is the hyperbolic plane, right? So, this is the Poincaré disk model that we have seen before, and, and all of these are regular hyperbolic polygons, okay? So, all the sides are the same length, okay? So, these are... So, and, and it, has, it is uniform, which uh, means that at every vertex, if you look around uh, the vertex and you look at these polygons that are appearing, you'll see the same, you know, it's a tuple of, uh, uh, of uh, the same set of polygons appearing at every vertex. So, for example, so here, the, uh, if you look at this vertex that I'm pointing to, so you have a triangle. If you look uh, sort of anti-clockwise, you see a triangle, triangle, Square, triangle, and pentagon. Okay, so sort of if, if you count to the number of sides, it's three, three, four, three, five. Okay, so and, and that's true for every vertex in this picture. So if you look at look here, it's three, three, four, three, five, and so on. Okay, so this is what is called a uniform tiling that with vertex type three, three, four, three, five. Okay, so so I'll I'll come to this uh, later again. So, um, so I'll, I'll, let's start with some basic definitions of what a tiling is and so on. So, so tiling, so you can talk of tilings of the hyperbolic plane or even the Euclidean plane or the sphere. So this is a tiling is, is always this. It's, so I only want regular polygons, so regular geodesic polygons. So geodesic just means that the sides are sort of geodesic segments. Right, and these are the tiles, and I want them to have, which to have interiors which are disjoint, so they are not overlapping. Okay, just like we saw for the fundamental domain, right? So these were sort of these interiors of them were disjoint, and we want this condition that adjacent tiles touch only at a vertex or along an edge. Okay, so you're not allowed to kind of overlap. The edges are not allowed to overlap a halfway. Okay, so um, so this is this, for example, is not a tiling. Okay, so by this definition, because here, I mean, some of these edges, I mean, the, the, the adjacent things, the, the only part of an uh, of an edge is common between the two. That that's not allowed, right? So you want adjacent things to just can meet at a at an along the entire edge, or you know, al along a vertex. Okay, like we saw before. Okay, or they're disjoint, of course. So if they're not that adjacent. Okay, so that's a tiling, and a vertex type of a, of a vertex is this uh, tuple of integers that I just mentioned earlier. So there are d of them, where d is the degree of the vertex. Degree means the number of edges to the vertex. So if there are d of them, there are d integers. Each of these k1, k2 to kd are bigger than or equal to 3. Okay, so these are the number of sides of the polygon. Okay, so if it's a triangle, it's 3. If it's a square, it's 4, and so on. And, and, you, are, and, these are, um, and you look uh, anti-clockwise or counterclockwise. Okay, so if you look counterclockwise, so this is a cyclically ordered tuple. Okay, so you can, I could have written it as 2k3 to d1, then followed by k1, right? So this is 
considered to be a cyclically ordered set. And, and these represent the number of these uh, sides of the polygons you see around a vertex. Okay, so if, uh, if a vertex has degree d, then there are also d polygons. Okay, so, uh, uh, easily see. So, so that's the vertex type. Okay, and a tiling is said to be uniform, that's in the title of the talk, if all the vertices uh, in, in this tiling have the same vertex type. Okay, so that, that's what a uniform, what I mean to be uniform. There. For example, in this, okay, so here's a kind of quiz. So which one do you think is a uniform tiling? This sometimes can be tricky, right? I mean, you have to... Um, so here you seem to have um, four, six, four, three. Okay, so in counterclockwise order, any vertex four, four, six, four, three. Okay, um, so pick any vertex four, six, four, three. You can you can choose a starting point. So this seems to be uniform, right? Is this uniform? So, so if you start, so at this vertex, let's say, right? So you have three, four, six, four, right? Three, four, six, four. But if you start here at this point, it is four, four, six, three. Right? And this 4463 is not a cyclic permutation of, I mean, it's not of, of 3464. Okay? So, so this is not a uniform. Okay, so, okay, fine. So this, all right, so this was, uh, this uh, took a little bit of, you know, sort of analyzing the picture, but this is easy. Okay, so that, uh, and, and also, I mean, so this is just a technical kind of um, line which you might ignore. Uh, so I, I mean, this, uh, there's a lot of a lot of um, literature over, you know, the last hundred years. Has, I mean, it's called tilings uniform, and uh, different um, places have different um, sort of terminology. And some require that automorphisms are vertex transitive. So it's really not just a local symmetry, but there's some kind of global symmetry. But this we don't require in our definition. Okay, so we only. Uniform tilings are just the ones which have every vertex, the same number of poly same polygons around it. Okay, so there's no other sort of global symmetry assumption. Okay, so uh, before I go to hyperbolic tilings, let me talk of tilings of the Euclidean plane and the sphere. Okay, so this is some f something more familiar to you. So here are some examples that you might have seen in you know sort of day-to-day -day life, right? So th this this one you definitely see. Um, Maybe every day. This one also. This is what's the? I mean, the the vertex type is four, 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 right? So here, so this is a hexagonal tiling. Um, uh, so this is six, six, six. Every vertex there are six hexagons around it, right? Um, and and so this is in fact uh, this is uh, sort of a picture I cropped from. Um, so something taken at the Taj Mahal, okay, so their architecture, sort of Islamic architecture and uh, sort of art and Persian art and architecture, they, they have a lot of these tilings, okay, so this is from there. And this tiling, in fact, this is a, a tiling by equilateral triangles, right, and three six pattern. This is actually from, uh, uh, from uh, some site in Pompeii, so okay, so they had um, in sort of in ancient times in Italy. Uh, well, okay, so maybe it's also not that uncommon, right? So these are three you've seen before. Okay, so these are, um, these have the property that not only are these uh, all tilings, they for all tilings, I mean, all the polygons are the same here, okay? You're not allowing sort of different polygons. But if you allow different polygons, then what are the possible tilings of the plane? So there are um, these, there, so there are exactly eight more. Okay, and, and these are uh, called these Archimedean tilings. Okay, so for example, uh, this is with, with squares and, and triangles, equilateral triangles, and, and you have a hexagon and square and triangle. So these are all uniforms, so there are eight of them. 
and they are all uniform tilings. Okay, um, but uh, okay. So these are uh, this these eight plus the the previous three, which are very familiar, are called the Archimedean tilings. They have a very long history, right? Probably thousands of known for thousands of years. Um, um, so. Um, so there is a uh, small catch, though. I mean, so the t t two small catches, which I'll say as remark. First of all, um, so there are two. I mean, if you look at this vertex type, there are actually two uh, different. So it's uh, hard to see in this over here that they are uh, different. But there's no. Um, uh, so there's no map that takes this whatever graph. If you look at the one skeleton of this, this will be some kind of graph, right? So it will. So there's no orientation preserving map of the plane that takes this to that. Okay, so there's a, there's a little bit of um, kind of, these are mirror images and these are different. Okay, there's some kind of chirality going on over here. So, um, so this, you know, one should count twice. And the other uh, sort of catch is that it, according to my definition of uniform tiling, so I only want these numbers to appear when you look in the in the um, counterclockwise order, okay? And in that, uh, with that condition, this is not a uniform tiling, although it appears in, in the usual list of Archimedean tilings, okay? So it actually appears uh, somewhere over here, so maybe this one, right? Um, so uh, this is, um, yeah, so this is a tiling with uh, squares, hexagons, and, and, and these 12 gongs, and if you see, uh, so if you look at this vertex, you'll see a 12, 6, 4, right? But if you look at this vertex, you can see a 4, 12, 6, okay? And, um, uh, 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 sorry, 4, 6, 12, right? So you, some vertices are 4, 6, 12, and some vertices are 12, 6, 4, and these are not cyclic permutations of each other, okay? So, so according to, I mean, so, so the definition I gave, this is not a uniform tiling. But it's uh, considered to be one of these Archimedean tilings. Okay, so, okay, so with this kind of these remarks, those were all. Okay, there are finitely many, and one way of seeing there are finitely many. So, so if you try to arrange, so this uh, again, I'm not talking about Euclidean geometry. If you try to arrange polygons around a vertex, right? So, so you have some kind of angle condition that needs to be satisfied. So, what do you have? So, each of them are regular. Polygons, right? So, what's a if your if your poly, regular polygon has k sides, then the interior angle is k minus two by k times pi. Okay, so this you can calculate. So we we did it for an octagon the, uh, yesterday, but but you can do it for any k gon. So if you if you have all these k one to k d these polygons arranged around a vertex and these fitting together. Right, so you, then you need the sum of these to be equal to two pi. Right, so this this tells you what this tells you gives you this equation. So this so if you have a Euclidean tiling with a uniform tiling with this vertex type, then these integers should satisfy this equation here. Right, and and this you can check. There are only finitely many possibilities. Okay, so if you, uh, I mean if you have um, I mean several of them and they are very large, then these are all these would be close to one, right? So you can't add up too many of them to get two, right? So, um, so they're, they're only, this is kind of, this check tells you they're finitely many. And in fact, it's not just 11, by the way. So it's, uh, uh, by the way, so this, uh, uh, yeah, this is an example of one of these tilings that are Archimedean tilings. So here, uh, yeah, so these are the uh, integers that appear. And you can check that if you add, um, these this, these ratios you will get exactly two for for, for these numbers. Okay, um, so so in this case you uh, so so the, these uh, two equilateral triangles, one square, another equilateral triangle, another square. These fit around a vertex, and you can you can tile the entire plane with that. Okay, this is something called a snub square tiling. Okay, so um, and there are there are actually twenty one possible. Such vertex types, which which fit together. So if you look at this, then again these integers will satisfy that equation. Okay, and and you can check. Um, right. So uh, so this is one example, but this doesn't extend to a tiling of the entire plane. Okay. So and so out of these 21, 
The 11 of these do extend to these uniform tilings, which I showed you. Okay, so that, that's uh, just um, kind of uh, fact. Okay, so, um, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so all, all these tiles I'm talking about now are uh, by regular polygons, right? So one can ask, okay, if I give you some, some kind of polygon, not be convex, I don't know, some polygon, does it tile the plane, okay? That's a different line of uh, qu questioning, and Penrose tiles are an example. There are two uh, tiles that do pile, tile the plane, but it does so in a way that doesn't have any translational symmetry. Okay, so, so in all these examples, by the way, so in all these examples that I, we had, I mean, there's, uh, there's a lot of symmetry in these tilings, right? So uh, there's some translational symmetries here. But a Penrose tile doesn't have, uh, you know, no matter how you, they, they do tile, these tiles, this pair of tiles does tile the plane, but it does so. There's an unsolved problem, which is, uh, I mean, can you have one tile which tiles the plane, but doesn't uh, tile it, peri I mean, um, periodically, it has to be aperiodic. So this is, uh, I mean, still uh, some things which are unknown there. Um, but, that, but, but today I'm talking about regular polygons, so, so these are... Uh, is, Penrose tilings doesn't quite appear here. Okay, um, so yeah, so, uh, let, so let me tell you, so this is, I mean, I mean this, Archimedean tilings have been known for quite a while, but I mean, this um, theorem is fairly recent by my colleague, um, Asudeb and, and, and Dipendu here. So, so it, it turns out that, you know, so um, um, Professor Datta, he, he has the same he, office in the same corridor, and he kind of came by once, uh, about a year ago, I don't know when uh, you guys did this, but um, and then sort of said, okay, so I've approved this theorem, and so and and I kind of uh, and and that's how I got uh, interested in so 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 he, he showed that if you have a uniform topological tile, so now it's you don't require the tiles to be polygons or geodesic sides or something, you know, so it could be in lopsided, you know, sort of, but it has some number of sides. Okay, if you have a topological tiling of the plane where uh, the, the, the vertex type equals one of these vertex types of an Archimedean tiling that we had before, like the snub square, what was, what, three, three, four, three, four, something like that. So if you start with such a topological tiling, then it must be isomorphic to that Archimedean tiling. You can't have some other arrangement, which is sort of a curious arrangement, which has the same vertex type, but it's not an Archimedean tiling. And... Um, yeah, maybe it can be proved by various ways, and maybe there are simpler proofs. But uh, let me sort of uh, tell you the idea, which, which, which is what I liked, actually. But I, I won't tell you the entire proof, but just a, a little bit of an idea, because it will come up later also. So um, the idea is to, so here's your, let's say you look at the vertex type 3, 6. Okay? So, so this actually appears in some earlier work of, uh, of uh, Basudev with, uh, with another... Um, a uh, student or collaborator uh, called uh, Upadhyay. But uh, so if you suppose, uh, so as you start with this, this is the Archimedean tiling, what it looks like. And this is what a topological tiling might look like, okay? So now you don't require all the sides to be geodesic and so on. So you want to define an isomorphism of graphs, basically, from one to the other. You want to map the vertices to vertices here and edges here so, so that, I mean, so these adjacency relations are. Uh, satisfied. So how do you do this? So, so all you know is that every vertex here has exactly six topological triangles around it, right? So that's all you know. So, I mean, the way that it goes, the proof goes uh, very roughly. I mean, it's a very nice idea, which uh, I won't get into now, because uh, so you have, you have to show, you kind of map, define this isomorphism layer by layer. If you look at this line in bold, you want to be able to map it to a, an infinite line over here. Okay, and the way you do it is you kind of pick a point on that, uh, on that line and look at the six um, triangles around it. And over here, you know that this vertex has six topological triangles around it. So there will be these six triangles, uh, and three of which are uh, above. So, so you, can, you, can, you can number these, which I haven't done here. And, so, and then one would be along this, uh, these, this line that you're trying to construct. And then you switch over to, the, so to, this, to the, that point, and you know that there are six triangles around it. 
and, and you can um, try to ex and then you extend that line a little bit and you have to show that and there, there, a little bit of topology comes in that it, these, this new point that you get this way is actually different from the first point. Okay, so, the, so abstractly, it's, you don't know this a priori because this is some topological triangle. You're doing this your local kind of laying down the local numbering. So it could happen that this coincided with one of the previous points. So you don't get a then then you would not get a uh, an infinite line here. You would you'd get something that's wrapped around. But there's some nice sort of topological argument using Euler characteristic that av avoids this. So then you see that this whole um, line gets laid out and then you sort of go to the next line and so on. So there's some kind of isomorphism one can explicitly construct layer by layer. Okay, so uh, anyway, so I, men I mentioned this because I mean this is what got me interested in this whole thing and I asked him the obvious question when, when he came and he told me about this. I mean so obvious question, I mean okay, so what happens for the hyperbolic plane, right? And that's what that's what kind of led me to. This is for the Euclidean plane. Archimedean tilings are for the Euclidean plane. So before I go on to the uh, hyperbolic plane, let me talk about the other thing which is classically known, namely tilings of the sphere. Okay, so all of these are, uh, if you want to draw them on the sphere, you can, right? With stereographic projection, you can think of these uh, edges as, as actually sort of parts of round circles on the sphere and so on. These are, these are all these solids, these polyhedra tilings of the sphere. So here there are uh, a bit more in number, okay? So first of all, there are these ones, okay? So some of these you already know the names of, right? I mean, do, how, many, how many can you name? Is That's a good question, right? So, so of course there are these, uh, what are called the platonic solids, right? So the tetrahedron, the cube, um, this octahedron, the dodecahedron, the icosahedron, but then there are these other ones, right? So these are the ones which are, uh, which have all the sides of the same uh, polygon, right? So, but, but as I said, all I want is, you know, all of them to be regular polygons, but you can allow different polygons, okay? So, and said, so then there are exactly these many, and maybe some of them are quite familiar, right? Which one is the football or something? Um, what? Sorry? Now the World Cup is also going. What? Uh, this one. Okay, maybe, maybe this one. Or this one. Okay, I mean, maybe different footballs have... Okay, sorry. <laughs> All of them can be yeah. These can be nice footballs. Uh, okay. Um, All right. So um, so these are some of them, um, and um, and these these are classically there are these um, there are these ones, and uh, then uh, so there, there are again some just like previous ones. There are remarks. There are some remarks here. By the way, so here what happens is that this angle sum that I talked about, okay, has to be less than two. Okay, this you can uh, compute it. Okay, so, um, uh, so equal to two gave you uh, Archimedean uh, tilings, uh, yeah, some of them. Okay, so there's this catch, which is, uh, there are actually, so if you look at the vertex type 4443, or 3444, whatever, which are, there are actually two of them. Okay, so this is sometimes, in the, in, the, in the literature people miss, okay? So people have, you know, this, this list of things that appeared, uh, many people have over, you know, centuries have been, come, uh, you know, sort of rediscovered and so on, right? I mean, it's been interested in this. Um, but, uh, and Kepler, including people like Kepler and so on, their, their names are associated with this list. Uh, and, but there are two uh, of, of which of type 3444. One of them is... Uh, is, uh, has a vertex transitive automorphism group. Actually, all of them, all of these have, so as uh, you know, automorphous, vertex transitive automorphism group are symmetries of the polyhedra, so this one vertex goes to another, okay? So uh, these all have these uh, symmetries, uh, so they are, um, so they have this extra thing, but if you, but remember, we don't care about global symmetries. We just want locally, every vertex, you should have three, four, four, four. So then there are two of these. So this one has vertex transitive automorphism group. You can see that you can kind of rotate this polyhedron to get any vertex to any other vertex. But this you can't. Okay, so here, for example, this uh, 3, 4, 4, 4 appears like this. Um, well, okay, so maybe it's not easy to see, but, but this one uh, you, you can't. And, and the way you get from this to this is notice that here you have these ring of squares, right? 
and then there are two caps above and below, right? So here you get this by twisting this cap. Okay, so, so here, uh, so see, if you see the square, there's a triangle on top and a triangle below. If you see the square, there's a triangle on top, but a square below. Okay, so you have kind of cut and twisted this cap and obtained this. Okay, so this uh, kind of twisting kind of thing will come up later also, so in context of hyperbolic tiling, so I just wanted to mention that. So, so this one, the vertex transitive one is called a rhombicubo octahedron, okay, so I, okay, so I hope I pronounced it right. This is a pseudo rhombicube octahedron. Okay, so this is people often confused. I mean, they, they thought, okay, so this one was actually this. Okay, so um, so anyway, um, uh, all right. And then there are actually sort of infinite families of so in in for, for uniform tilings for a sphere, it's, uh, prisms. You can have arbitrarily many squares in this ring in the bottom. Okay, and these will all be have this uniform. These are all regular polygons, and, and then similar ones with anti-prisms. I've drawn one of them, but you actually have infinitely many of them. So uh, these are all uh, so equilateral triangles, and you can make this ring of equilateral triangles as large as you want, and you have a corresponding polygon here. Okay, so the, the vertex type of this is what? I mean, this is 4, 4, n, right? So some 4, 4, n. So n is some something large. Okay, so um, so they're actually so uh, the analog of Archimedean tilings on the plane. There were only finitely many, but here there are actually infinitely many. Okay, so I'm sure you now you're kind of eager look at hyperbolic tilings. Okay, so now um, yeah, so this is an example. So now um, yeah, this is an example where you have um, uh, seven equilateral hyperbolic triangles about any vertex. Okay, so. Um, so if you look at any vertex, there should be seven of them. Um, and these tile the hyperbolic plane here shown in the Poincaré disk model, right? So um, and how does one uh, get some of these? So there's, a, so there's a kind of a Fuchsian group hiding in the picture. Okay, so this picture is very symmetric, right? So, so there's actually invariant under Fuchsian group. So how do you find this Fuchsian group? Well, if you look at a triangle, um, so, so actually, what I'm interested in is this, this uh, shaded region. So, if you have to look at a triangle with angles pi by two, so one of them is right angles, pi by three and pi by d, okay, and I look at reflections across these sides. Okay, so, so, so one thing that I didn't uh, kind of say um, in my lectures is that um, so a reflection is something which looks informally maybe like. So it's an anti-conformal map. It's not a holomorphic map. Something which looks like this is also an isometry of the upper half plane to itself. Okay, it is not an automorphism. Okay, it's not a conformal map, but uh, it it preserves the hyperbolic metric. So the the automorphisms, the PSL two R that I was talking about, are all the orientation preserving isometries. But this one uh, is a is something that will reverse the orientation, but it's still an isometry of the hyperbolic plane. Okay, so this is a reflection, and... Yeah, so this will be the, yeah, so the fixed point set will be some geodesic. Okay, so you can, one can work out what the geodesic is. And so, about geodesics, you can reflect. Okay, and if you look at, if you look at, take this triangle, so earlier, I mean, this Poincare polygon theorem that I talked about, you ha one had a, polygon and we spared sides at hyperbolic translations and then looked at the Fuchsian group generated by these. Instead, if you allow orientation reversing uh, elements, then you can look at a triangle, sorry, you can look at a triangle and reflect about each of these sides and look at the hyperbolic uh, the of isometries generated by these three reflections. Okay, and, and just like the Poincare polygon theorem had a condition about the vertex cycle being uh, sort of these identity and so on, and elliptic. So here the condition of for generating a Fuchsian group is that these angles must be sort of um, uh, some of the form pi by some integer. Okay, so, so then, so under this condition, you actually generate a Fuchsian group and you, and, and the corresponding, and you look at, uh, and these would generate a tiling. So there are, these um, uh, these six copies of this triangle that I started with, 
which will cover a bigger triangle, and that triangle would be would form tiles for a regular yeah, for a uniform tiling. Okay, so um, yeah, so 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 there's a so there's a way of constructing these uniform tilings in this in the case when you have triangles as tiles using um, these Fuchsian groups. All right, and then this is a presentation of the Fuchsian group that are, that are generated by reflections along. Um, it's three sides. I mean, maybe this is a finite index subgroup of that reflection. Okay, so um, so, uh, so this is called uh, this particular group. Of the presentation is sometimes called the Schwartz triangle group. And so this generates a uniform tile, and you can do it not just for triangles, but uh, so of the things with vertex i p to the q. So p to the q just means p q times. Okay, so I, I, I kind of used this notation earlier, but didn't say what it was. So you can have Q polygons of, with, of Q p-gons, right? So, so each p-gon has p sides. You have, can arrange Q of them around a vertex, and you can form a tiling. And if you start with this uh, Schwartz uh, triangle group, so here, instead of uh, these angles being pi by d and pi by 3, you, allow, you have pi by p and pi by q. Okay, and then you sort of, and you, you generate, then this, you can build a uniform tiling with this type, and the only condition is 1 by p plus 1 by q is less than half. Okay, and, and this is what, um, so, so, so this comes from the fact that the sum of angles, of the interior angles of a triangle, of a hyperbolic triangle, is less than pi, right? Something that we've um, seen before. So one of them is pi by 2, and one of them is pi by p, and one of the other is pi by q, then um, you need to have this uh, inequality satisfied, okay? So 1 plus p. So whenever you have this, you can, you can build a, a Fuchsian group by this prescription, okay? And you can get a tiling. Okay, and, and you note that what happens to that angle sum condition that we had before? So this sum, remember you took every, so the number of sides minus 2 by the number of sides and you add it over this. So this becomes a, so now the, all the polygons have p sides. So it's p minus 2 by p and there are q of them. So which is this, and this you can calculate is greater than 2. If 1 plus p one is less than half, this is always greater than 2. So, so now the angle sums are bigger than 2. So for Archimedean tilings, it was equal to 2. For the sphere, it was less than two, and for all for hyperbolic tilings, they're greater than two. So already you see there are infinitely many uniform tilings of the hyperbolic plane. Of you know each so for any p and q, it satisfies this, right? So any integers p and q are greater than or equal to three, you're satisfying this, you have a tiling. Okay, and the angle sum is bigger than two. So this is some kind of a geometric requirement. Okay, whenever you have a tiling, you'll have to have this. Okay, so and so the first kind of observation, maybe um, some small observation, is that um, in fact this angle sum greater than two is a necessary and sufficient condition for the existence of a fan. What's this fan? It's a configuration of hyperbolic, regular hyperbolic polygons, d of them around a vertex, and where I mean, so that they are d of them, so they have number of sides k1, k2. Okay, so this is like the analog of these configurations, local configurations we were seeing in the Euclidean setting, right? So in the Euclidean setting, so this angle sum had to equal to 2, right? And so, so here, the, the first kind of sort of the, the lemma or the kind of the observation is that if this is greater than 2 if and only if there's such a configuration, okay? So, and this you can, uh, you can easily see, the proof is something like a continuity argument. So, so what's, uh, I mean, what do you have to do? So if you have some, let's say you have these uh, seven, um, uh, so th well, I mean, you, uh, so, so let, let's take some other thing. So suppose you have uh, like f uh, two squares and two pentagons, okay? So, so these definitely, they, they um, they don't tile the, high, the Euclidean plane, right? If you have, uh, you're in the Euclidean plane, there will be some excess angle, right? So only four squares can, can fit together in, a, in the Euclidean plane, right? So 
If you have four, four, five, five, then there'll be some excess angle, right? So this angle sum is bigger than two, right? So how do you f figure out um, some? So um, how do you know that there is some hyperbolic set of hyperbolic polygons which are regular, which do fit well? So you can give these sides a length. So suppose all of them have length L, right? So then again, it's the continuity argument we saw last time for that octagon, right? So suppose you have this configuration, and suppose you are in this disk model, you are all, your L is very small. So if your L is very small, then these two squares and two pentagons, um, if, you, if you try to uh, draw it here, so this angle around would be close to the Euclidean one, which is bigger than 2 pi. Okay, so, and, and then, but if you draw some, something large, okay, so if you, if you, if you take all of these, polygon, uh, these uh, polygons to ideal ones, right, so then these, this angle can be uh, made small, okay, and there's some, some kind of continuity argument tells you that there is some value of L for which uh, these uh, polygons, regular polygons in the hyperbolic plane will have exactly 2 pi angle around this, okay, so... Um, so, th so this kind of uh, tells you that there's always... So this is like a... can be a starting point of... Uh, this is a starting point for building a tiling, right? So, all right. And I'm going to, in what follows, I'm going to represent a fan by this. Okay, so this is going to be a, a sort of a, an, a picture of, uh, of hyperbolic polygons or something. So all I'm interested in is the combinatorics of the tiling. So uh, these, this... This piece here, this is a circle cut into wedges, right? So each wedge represents a polygon. So this wedge represents a, a square, right? Because there are four vertices. And so you can think of these uh, remaining edges as, as part of the sides of the polygon. Okay, so, so the previous thing tells you that whenever this, uh, uh, this angle sum is bigger than two, then uh, this can be realized as a... a a hyperbolic, you know, picture, okay? So, but I'm going to draw it topologically like this, okay? So the polygons are these wedges. And, and to inc introduce more edges, I just introduce more vertices on this side, okay? So this is going to represent... Uh, uh, so the basic question... Uh, uh, so, so suppose you start with something so that the angle sum exceeds 2, okay? So, the, so there is some kind of... Um, yeah, so fan, what I call a fan, okay? So some, uh, si some polygons around a vertex. So when is there a uniform tiling? When do you continue to a tiling of the entire plane? And, and when is it unique? Okay. So as far as I know, this, these are not... Um, yeah, so the answers are not known in full, full generality. Okay, so... Um, but let me tell you what is something that, uh, that is known. So first of all, there's a necessary condition. So remember that I, um, that I um, said... So the one necessary condition is the angle sum is bigger than two, right? So that's something. This is something I said earlier when defining uniform tilings, which means the set of uh, numbers, they represent polygons appearing in counterclockwise order, okay? So, um, so this immediately implies that if, if x, y appears in this uh, tuple, which means uh, x followed by y somewhere, okay? So integers x and y, then so does yx. Why is this well? And, and suppose this is a, t what I mean is this is a tiling of some, is a some vertex type of some uniform tiling. So if you have a, a vertex uh, type, you have a uniform tiling with this vertex type, if you look at this point, then you see, suppose this is part of a, I've only drawn partial picture, but so this is a polygon with X number of sides, and this is a polygon with Y number of sides. They share an edge. Okay, so if you look at this end point of that edge, then if you encounter clockwise order, you'll see X followed by Y, okay? And, but if you look here, in counterclockwise order, you see Y followed by um, X, okay? So, so if uh, this vertex type is, uh, is, is achieved by some uniform tiling, then um, whenever you see X, Y, you should also see Y, X, okay, in the cyclic order, all right? So this is one condition. I'm going to add another condition. So whenever you see x, y, and y, z in the cyclic tuple, cyclically ordered tuple k1 to kt, then you, all, you should also have x, y, z 
somewhere. Okay? So one example of something which doesn't satisfy this is uh, uh, something like this. So, uh, so 4, 5, 4, 6, 5, 6. Okay, so this satisfies the first necessary condition. Whenever you see a pair, so let's see, so sorry. Um, yeah, so, so, so 4, 5 and 5, 4 both are there, right? Uh, 4, 6 and 6, 4 are there, right? 6 and 4 are adjacent to each other and, and so on. So the first condition is satisfied. The second one is not satisfied. Can someone tell me? So, so here, I mean, okay, so it's harder to see. So, so uh, 4, 5 appears, right? So 4, 5 appears and 5, 6 appears, but 4, 5, 6 doesn't appear consecutively in this tuple. Okay, so the second condition is not satisfied. All right? Um, but you can come up with lots of examples which do satisfy this condition. For example, if, well, if all of them are 4, for example, then it's... All right, so, so the main result, this is the, I mean, this can be discussions with Vasudev Dutta. So, um, this is some ex existence kind. Suppose you, if you kind of um, take a tuple, right, which, so that the angle sum is greater than 2, and which satisfies those two conditions, A and B, right? So, X, Y, and involving those consecutive pairs or consecutive triples. And, it also and you also have this, which, actually, so later we kind of relax this a bit. So uh, this is, you have the number of polygons is at at least four, okay? And the number of sides of each of these uh, polygons is at least four. So you don't allow triangles as tiles, okay? That's some kind of restriction here. But these guys can uh, kind of do other things to relax this, but this is the simplest. So, so suppose you have that, then there exists a uniform tiling of the hyperbolic plane with this vertex type. Okay? So some kind of its um, yeah, existence criterion. And in fact, um, so uh, the tiling is unique if two consecutive elements um, of the tuple determine the rest. So the, it, there's only a unique way you can continue the tuple uh, so that you can... I'll come back to that later. Okay, so... So this is uh, kind of the result, and I want to, wanted to talk about um, the proof in general. So it's non-unique in general, okay? So, so these two are have uniform tilings with the same uh, vertex type 4, 4, 4, 6, okay? Um, can you see that these are different? Right? So these are... Uh, tantalizingly close, right? But um, and, I mean, they're somewhat different, right? So you see that from if you want to get from this hexagon to that, you're kind of crossing three, but here it's just one, right? And things like that. I mean, so these are actually different tilings, and the way that you get from, uh, I mean, so uh, suppose you start with this one and you want to get, I mean, so one way of trying of getting there to there is uh, you see that there is this row of squares, okay? So in the hyperbolic plane, this is like a geodesic, right? So, uh, so there's a geodesic and there's a, some kind of, along that geodesic, you're putting all these squares, right? So what you can do is you can shift all the tiles on one side, uh, you know, so along that geodesic, you know, either this way or that, okay? So, so I mean, let me sort of show it schematically. So. Here is that row of squares. On one side, if you look, so if you look in the picture, so if this row of squares, um, uh, what happens on the both the sides? So you, ha you see a square and a hexagon, a square and a hexagon, square and a hexagon, and so on. And the same on the other side, okay? So here, so here I've done a pentagon, but you can also do a hexagon. It's the same, um, same principle that happens. So, so you see that you have a square and a hexagon, square and on both sides. Now, if you shift the bottom, uh, so, so how have I shifted? Maybe I've shifted it one way. So which way doesn't matter. So if you shift it, I still preserve the vertex type. So that every vertex, uh, okay, so of these, uh, in the shaded row, every vertex on the boundary will still have the same vertex type. 
in both cases. But you have shifted. So, uh, so remember that this everything down here is another kind of set of tiles, right? So this this uh, geodesic kind of you know, separates this kind of tiled region from this, right? So you can shift the entire tiled region here along the geodesic one uh, the one step or or or, or the other, or minus one step, or whichever. Um, and, and then you'll get a different tiling, okay? And you can do this for uh, any one of these, so there are these infinite collection of these geodesics, actually. So, right, so you can do it for uh, each of these, if you like, okay? As there are any number of these. So you could actually get uncountably many or distinct tilings, okay? All with the same kind of vertex type, uniform tilings with the same vertex type, okay? So this was something that wasn't true in the, uh, for Archimedean tilings, for in instance, right? So because you can shift along these, do this shifting. This is the analog of that twisting that I told you about in the Platonic uh, solid, for the, the Archimedean solid. Um, okay, um, all right, so this was non-unique in general. Now, how do you construct tilings with a given vertex type? So how do you prove that ex prove theorem that I mentioned? Okay, so, um, so it's actually an easy proof, so I'll uh, kind of uh, tell you. So you start with a fan. So the, what's the strategy? I'm going to build it layer by layer. Okay, so kind of move outwards in concentric circles. I'm going to start with a fan. This is kind of stuck to this picture. I know that since the angle sum condition is satisfied, angle sum is greater than two, there is some configuration that you can start with. Okay, and then I want to keep adding, keep expanding this. Uh, so into a nested, in a sequence of nested. Uh, regions which are all tiled, okay, so, the, so that the union of these is the entire hyperbolic plane, and uh, so that if you stop at any stage, xi, the interior vertex of every xi has a, a vertex type that, that you want, okay, so, so of course this is true for x0, right, x0 has an, exactly one vertex, and that is by construction the vertex type that you want, right, so and you want to keep adding, right? So keep adding. So how do you do this? Um, so okay, okay. So there are two more properties that I want for these tiled regions. First of all, these are, both of these are, are true for uh, the x zero. So first of all, all the boundary vertices have um, valence two or valence three. Okay, so this is true if you look at uh, one of these. Uh, so if you look at a represent, well, so these. This wedge picture, right? So, so remember that. So, so let's take, uh, let's say, four, four, five, five. This satisfies conditions A and B, and the angle sum. Okay, so this you can kind of check. Um, so, four, four, five, five. What does it look like? It looks something like this, right? So, um, so you have two squares. This is a square. One, two, three, four. Right, that's a four-sided polygon. This is five sides. I'm just adding another sort of vertex along this arc makes it a bigger polygon, right? So, um, so this is the representation of that fan. Uh, so all the vertices in the boundary uh, have either valence two or valence three. So the valence three vertices are these ones, right? So where there's an edge coming inside. And otherwise, if it's on these arcs, it's valence two, okay? So this is certainly true, this property is certainly true for x0, and, and in our construction, I want all our xi's to have that property, okay? And secondly, I mean, so this is something also that we want, I mean, it's just some nice property to have, the tiled regions that we want are, should be disks, right? So I want some sequence of expanding disks, okay? So, I mean, th this is, I mean, a fan is, is topologically always a disk, right? So you can, this is homeomorphic to a, a closed disk. Okay, um, and then we shall, as I said, inductively show that these hold for each. So it's going to be an inductive construction, okay, from xi I want to get to xi plus one so that these are satisfied. And the additional property which I didn't mention is the fact that all the interior vertices have the same vertex type, right? I mean, that's what we want. Okay, so, um, so what do you do? So, so if you look at, so let's start with xi and you want to get to xi plus one. So xi, you can think of it as x0 if you want, the, the initial fan. So if you look around the, vert, uh, the boundary, you can number the vertices appearing in the boundary, the boundary vertices, v0, v1, 
V2 up to Vn. Okay, so, and in a, some counterclockwise order. <coughs> Moreover, excuse me, so you can, um, you can um, choose your V0 to have valence 3 and Vn to have valence 2. So this a little bit of thought would tell you that if you have property 1, okay, so not all of them are valence 2, or, uh, I mean, so, yeah, so um, some are valence 2, valence, valence 3, there at least one boundary vertex of valence 2. This happens because um, I mean, because we are looking at all of them are, uh, are um, four uh, and above, right? So remember, there was a condition in my theorem that I don't allow triangles. Okay, so if there was a triangle, then you, this would be the polygon, right? So, but we don't allow that. We, there are always some vertex, um, always some vertex which has valence two. Okay, so this, so this is again also satisfied, okay? Um, so you, you can actually sort of, this is easy to check that there will be some uh, vertex which are valence 3 and immediately preceding it will be some of thing of valence 2. Okay, you can always arrange so that you can, they are numbering so that this happens. Okay, so once this happens, what do you have to do? You have to complete the fan around this, right? So, um, so you have to add polygons. So that, so this is what I've drawn schematically. You have to add this wedge and it would subdivide it into polygons. Okay, again, this is a schematic picture, just like this was a fan. So this is, a, this is actually, so you should think of a topological, topologically, this is a collection of these polygons. So what allows you to do that? Well, if you, if um, the number of, um, if the number of sides of P is X and Q is Y, right? So then to be able to complete this fan, to be extend, so P, Q, if you want to follow it with R, S, T, and so on, so you want to find polygons that, that fit and give you the same vertex type. So the number of polygons, uh, number of sides of P is X and this is Y, then you want X, Y to appear in the vertex type, okay? so. So this number of, uh, yeah, so x, y should appear in the vertex side. But if you look at this edge, E, and you look at the endpoint W, then if you look around W in counterclockwise order, you see that y, x appears in the vertex type of, of W. Okay, so now, but uh, you know the property, uh, the, fir the fir first uh, property of this tuple, that if uh, y, x appears in the vertex type, then so does x, y. Okay, so you know the x, Appears in the vertex type um, uh, uh, in this tuple, so you can follow it. There are some integers following x, right? And so you can put those as the number of sides of these polygons and complete it to a fan. Okay, so so this is sort of the uh, the way to get started. Okay, this is completing the fan at this point v0. So suppose you've completed fans at v0, v1, v2 up to v j minus one. Remember, there are n of them. Around right, so there's some kind of uh, double induction going on here. But anyway, so suppose you've kind of completed fans, and you look at you've you've come to this boundary vertex of x i, which was v j. Okay, so then there are two cases. One, which before I added this fan, this uh, boundary vertex had valence two. Now after adding it, the valence has become three because there's a piece of this polygon. There's an edge here that has I've added this. Okay. So, uh, is this picture clear? So, I'm kind of adding all these fans around vertex, and I've come to this one. Okay, so, uh, so maybe in the previous picture, this, in this V1, right, originally without this added. So, this V1 was valence 2. Okay, so after I added this fan, which is uh, with some number of polygons here, this would, have be would be some valence 3 now. That will be in this extra edge coming in. Okay, so this is the case I am at. So suppose I'm, uh, you know, so it has valence three. So then if you call these polygons P and Q over here, um, so I need to add a fan. Now this fan would, the wedge would look like this, okay? And I need to subdivide this into some number of polygons, okay? Some number of wedges, I need to add um, uh, vertices along the arcs if necessary. So it's going to look, the next fan would look something like this. So what allows, you, uh, allows us to continue? Uh, well, again, if P is X, a number of sides, and Q has Y, 
then you want to show that x, y appears in the vertex type. Okay, and, and this time you need to look at this vertex v, j minus 1. This would have y, x in the, in, appearing in um, counterclockwise order around it. So you know that y, x is in the vertex type that we started with. And then so, so is x, y by that property. So, so you can continue those, uh, you can choose a number of sides here to, to continue and, and sort of fill up and to complete this fan. Okay. Um, and a similar thing happens, so now you might reach a vertex Vj, which has had valence 3 in Xi, okay? So, so then, now that you've added this fan, it would become valence 4, okay? And this is where you would all have these three polygons, P, Q, and R around it. This is where you use condition B, that, that second one that I, I mentioned, okay? So if X, Y... And y, z appear, then so does x, y, z. Okay, so you can kind of figure out as a simple combinatorics that, uh, that uh, so looking at this diagram, that um, x, y, z, if x, y, z are the number of sides of P, Q, and R, x, y, z should appear in the vertex type. So if x, y, z appears in the vertex type, then at v, j, you can add a fan which uh, completes... Uh, this, uh, the, you can complete a fan, so it has, includes these polygons, P, Q, and R, and then there's some number of polygons following it, and there, remember that we are choosing the degree greater than or equal to 4, so there's a, at least one other polygon. So, uh, so you, can, you, can, uh, you can add a wedge like this, and maybe subdivide it, and so on. So, um, uh, so you can add, a, 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 you can complete this to a fan, and you know, now you need this extra condition B. Okay, so um, yeah, so this way you can continue and the, you reach the final fan. Okay, so you kind of add, you added these fans all around. Okay, this is only a partial picture, and you've reached the like the nth stage. So now you have to add in, a, you can complete the fan at the n. So there you need condition B again. So um, so you need, uh, so you have three polygons Q, P, and R, and you need to check that X, Y, Z or y, x, z, whatever it is, appears in the vertex type of vn. Okay, so this again, a combinatorial argument tells you that you can. So you've, you'll be able to complete all the fans for all the boundary vertices. Now what happens in, a pro in the process? Well, all the vertice, boundary vertices of xi are now in the interior. Right? You've kind of added a layer, you, since you've completed the fan around each of these boundary vertices, so now you've expanded the region, so you kind of have a new region xi, X, sorry, xi plus 1, which is xi union, all these fans you added around the thing. And this will be a bigger region. It has the property that each interior vertex has vertex type k, because, what, uh, of course, that was already true for xi, interior vertices of xi. Now these boundary vertices are interior vertices also. But by construction, you've chosen uh, all of these to have the same vertex type also. Okay, so... So now you've kind of expanded this region, and you have a bigger region, which is also tiled and has the same property. And you need to check that you can continue. So you need to check the two properties that you use. So property one, remember, was that, so by construction, each interior vertex of vertex type K, property one was that all the boundary vertices are valence two or three, and there's at least one boundary vertex of valence two. So why are these true? <coughs> So, so this, you know, you have to look at the picture to see. So there's al always going to be, since we are choosing, there can't be triangular tiles. So if you add, let's say, a tile, something here, there's go going to be a, some point which looks like this, so, which is valence 2. So the second statement is sort of easy to see. And, and similarly, you can, you can kind of check that, um, so all the, so the new boundary vertices that you have obtained will have uh, either valence 2 or valence 3. Okay, so, and, and, and uh, it's, this is a kind of more easy to see. This tiled region is again homeomorphic to a disk. Okay, so you kind of added these regions. They're all simply connected. You can, this has become a bigger disk. Okay? So, um, right, and so all that you need to do to check the, the, this uh, in tiles, the entire hyperbolic plane is that you need to check that this exhausts the plane, right? So you, that these are indeed getting bigger and bigger. Okay, so that's a little geometric exercise now to see that 
these, these actually get larger and larger and cover the entire thing. Okay, so, um, yeah, so, so this is out of the lemma that's involved. I mean, um, yeah, so you need to show that the distance of this boundary vertices of xi plus 1 are, are at least some distance r away from the boundary vertices of xi. Okay, and then the, so there's sort of finitely many configurations to check, uh, uh, and, and you, can, you can do this. All right, so now what about uniqueness? So, so remember that uh, this whole construction, we, we had maybe some choices. We, we could choose, so if you had QPR uh, in, the, in the vertex type, um, you could choose the number of, um, yeah, so you, you could, um, you have to choose the number of sides of the polygons succeeding it. If there is no choice, then this whole construction is unique. Every step you have adding the fans is unique. And that's, uh, that happens when, um, so any pair of successive elements determines the rest of the integers here in, the, in a cyclic order. Okay, so, so you already always, that whenever you're adding a fan uh, in this construction, you already had two polygons in place. Okay, and, and then if, if there's a unique way of choosing numbers to follow that, then it determines the rest of this in the cyclic order. Uh, okay, so, um, so there's a, the, in that case, there's a unique tiling of that vertex type. But the cases of non-uniqueness that I showed, um, that doesn't happen. So suppose these are, again, two different tilings. So maybe here the lines are not visible. But uh, they, these are actually squares, okay? So it's a row of squares, all right? Um, now, at every vertex, this should be the vertex type in both these cases, but uh, they're different, and this is kind of easier to see. This is, they have this row of squares here. Uh, sorry, the, 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 these are maybe these are row of triangles, sorry. But, so these are kind of, uh, so you have one triangle here, another triangle here, so there's a zigzag. Okay, which, uh, which is not visible in this um, slide. But there's a zigzag here. Um, and so, so at every vertex, you have three triangles followed by a square, a triangle, a square. Three triangles followed by a square, triangle, square. And this is, this is, this is more uh, sort of obvious here. So this is true here. But here, you don't have that row of triangles. Right? So here, you have this infinite row. It's like a hyperbolic geodesic uh, uh, worth of uh, triangles, right? So here you don't see such a thing. So these are distinct tilings. Both are uniform tilings. And the way that this appears is now this doesn't satisfy that criterion that we had for uniqueness. Remember, uniqueness is that every pair of successive elements determines the rest. So if you see in this tiling, suppose I start with sort of 3, 3, right? So then uh, well, so, th so then you could follow it 3, 4, 3, 4. Okay, so that gives you the vertex type. You could have also followed it with, what's the other one? So you could have also followed it 4, 3, so 4, 3, 4, 3, right? Okay, so, so this pair, 3, 3, doesn't have a unique continuation that gives you this vertex, uh, this uh, cyclic tuple. Okay, so this, this uh, would give you some choices when you try to lay out these tiles, do this algorithm that uh, I kind of mentioned. Then, uh, if you, uh, then there'll be some choices to do, to, and uh, depending on the choice, you would either get this tile or that, or maybe some others. Okay, so, uh, so there could be sort of um, infinitely many choices. But if, if this uh, is not true, if this each uh, step is uh, determined uniquely, Right? If, if this uh, pair, any pair determines the rest uniquely, then it's, uh, uh, then it's, uh, it's a unique tiling. So for example, this, 4, 4, 5, 5. If you pick any pair of elements, there's a unique way to uh, sort of add sort of, uh, successive integers that creates this cyclic tuple. Okay? So, um, any questions? Okay. So, um, so this is another example of... Uh, so let me tell you some, I mean, the kind of interesting thing about this, uh, there are a lot more questions that, uh, that, that all this raises. So first of all, I told you this was existence criteria which went one way. These were sufficient conditions for the existence of a tiling. But, uh, but I don't know whether there are, I mean, whether there are nice conditions you can state on this tuple 
that are necessary and sufficient. Okay, so for example, this tile that I wrote down, which I said did not satisfy condition B, okay, it actually has a tiling. There is a tiling which has uh, four, five, four, six, five, six around it. Okay, this is a picture of the tiling. Okay, so um, so it's not a sufficient condition. So this in uh, the result I mentioned, the theorem, it's only one way. Okay, so it's not an if and only if. So the question, I mean. Which uh, I mean, I don't know the answer is whether there is an if and only if which can be stated nicely. I mean, in particular, I mean, even this I quite don't quite. Is there a like a finite set a check that you need to do to check whether a tuple is uh, uh, you know belongs to uh, some uniform tiling or not? Okay, is there? So the checks, I, the conditions I had before, the angle sum, condition A, condition B, was a finite check. You only needed to know a, a, a small portion of the of the string at a time, right? I mean, so you only need to, to know all the triples or all the pairs of successive elements or all the triples of consecutive elements. So is there some kind of finite state automaton? This is a, sort of the way you would frame it in terms of, um, sort of algorithms. Is there some such thing with, to detect if K is a vertex type? Okay, so even this, uh, I mean, I don't quite know. Maybe the answer is known, but I don't know it. Um, and the secondly, so this was all of this was for um, the hyperbolic plane. Now you can ask for the tiling to have symmetries, like, so invariant under some Fuchsian group, which gives a quotient a compact surface. So we've seen this earlier, right? So uh, yesterday we saw some examples of Fuchsian groups. So you, if, you, if you want a tiling that is invariant under some Fuchsian group, it gives you a compact surface then the styling would descend to some kind of uniform tiling on that compact surface. Okay? So, um, so in this particular example that I give, so the three seven tiling, right? So there are seven triangles around every vertex. Maybe this picture is somewhat missing, but, but the, the, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so there is some such three seven tiling, which I had a picture before, right? So, so this, that actually, there is a quotient with the genus three surface. And that was known to Klein. Okay, so Klein in 1879, this is apparently taken from one of his notebooks. Uh, so he, again, if this is a figure and some kind of triangulation of some, um, how many sides are there? So some uh, 14 sides, and there's some kind of identification of the slide of sides, which I forget. It's I think every um, side is um, so every. Um, let's see. So if I remember, so. Um, Every odd side is um, identified with the odd side plus four uh, in this cyclic order, something like that. Okay, so um, there's some identification of sides that builds a genus three surface, and and then this triangulation, which is this is actually the um, a picture of the of the three seven tiling, a portion of the three seven tiling, except the other lines that he has drawn. So they are double the number of triangles, but as I so. So some of the triangles kind of combine to give you a three-seven tiling. Okay, so this actually gives you a three. So once you identify the sides, you will get a genus three surface with a tiling by triangles, equilateral triangles in the hyperbolic plane, uh, so the regular kind of triangles, uh, and and each of each vertex will have exactly seven triangles around it. Okay, so this was known to Klein, and this is a picture. Okay, so of the triangulation. Okay, maybe it's hard to see the, what the triangles are, but um, I, I don't know how many triangles there are. I mean, one can calculate probably. And so uh, this is taken from uh, this John Bez's website. This, the, actually, this is a screenshot I took from an animation. Okay, so there's an animation of, of uh, which, which kind of shows the symmetry. This surface is a very famous surface. The quotient of this genus three surface is quotient by that particular Fuchsian group is called the Klein Quartic, and it's kind of a, important, it's a, it's, a, it's a highly symmetric surface, okay, so, uh, and, and, uh, and, this, and this triangulation, this three seven tilings descends to this, okay, so it gives you some three seven tilings of that. But I don't know whether, what other examples are, so what, I mean, suppose you fix your vertex type K, okay, so which compact oriented hyperbolic surfaces have a uniform tiling with vertex type K, and and if, if it has, how many such tilings are there? Okay, so these things, uh, I mean, I don't know. So uh, part, some of these, I mean, 
I think so. Dependu kind of uh, has some answers, and so there are some. I mean, so examples of links of uh, so these uniform tie links with uh, uh, so um, with different polygons of genus two surface and so on. There are partial answers, by the way. So there's 1982. This paper and uh, annals it, it, it talked about tie links with this vertex type PQ, and it said that whenever so there's some kind of Euler characteristic condition, right, which tells you when a, a, a vertex type, you can have a tiling. There's some kind of condition coming out of just computing the Euler characteristic. And if whenever that is so, this paper said that whenever that condition is satisfied, there is a tiling of that genus surface. Okay, so whenever the Euler characteristic of the surface matches with the, what is needed to have a genetic uh, type uh, PQ tiling, then there's so that's a partial answer. We've seen that there are lots of other uh, tilings which have vertex types equals 2 minus 2G. Yeah, there'll always be some uniform tiling of that surface with that PQ uh, type vertex type. Okay, so this is the 1982. A more recent paper is uh, something that I had kind of mentioned this is with uh, Basudeb. Um, with uh, Padhai. So when they kind of looked at not tilings but triangulations. Okay, so these are so here again. So it's a um, it's a three seven triangulations of a genus two surface this time. Okay, not the Klein Klein one was genus three. So and they counted how many triangulations there are of of the of such of the genus two surface so that which are uniform in the sense I said, which every vertex has exactly seven triangles around it, okay, so they were, they were concerned with just topological triangles, so they didn't care about hyperbolic tri triangles and so on, but, but it's topologically, you know that once you, uh, yeah, you can always choose your side length so that they actually become hyperbolic, so there, are, and then they com computed, and there are six of them, exactly six of them, and these are pictures of these, so the fifth and the sixth ones, and these are numbers, and if you identify sides with the same pair of numbers, so five, nine, is kind of identified with 5, 9 here, and so on, then you get a genus 2 surface, okay? So, uh, I mean, I don't know how they get these pictures. So they appear in their paper, and so, you know, Dipendu's, uh, kind of knows this technique also of getting so. so these give you genus 2 surfaces after these identifications that which are tiled with, uh, with this 3, uh, 7 tiling. Okay, and, and finally, the last question is we can talk of higher dimensions. Okay, so hyperbolic three space, which I did not uh, get to talk about in my first lecture, but, the, but there's a hyperbolic, I mean, it has the hopper hop space model, you get a ball model, a hyperboloid model, and so on. And you can ask for uniform tilings of H3 by regular polyhedra. What are the, this is an open question. This, I mean, uh, Pretty sure this is an open question. One example of uh, such a tiling is uh, this is a kind of a famous example where you have dodecahedra. So dodecahedra are these polyhedra with uh, sides which are pentagons. Okay, so this is something that you've seen in um, in um, I mean so as in one of these platonic solids, right? So. So you can talk of hyperbolic dodecahedron, and, the, and there is a tiling of hyperbolic three space where there are five dodecahedrons around every vertex. Okay, so, uh, so all the pieces now are three-dimensional. The tiles are dodecahedrons. All of them are regular, and there are five around every vertex. And these kind of, this is the picture of that tiling of the hyperbolic three space. Okay, so um, anyway, so I, I end here, but there's so more things to explore what one can think about and uh, we can discuss at some point. All right, thanks. In the proof, uh, I mean, in the whole calculation, so uh, mostly it was combinatorial, right? Towards, towards right, the whole construction. Yeah. So the hyperbolic matrix was used only initially to, uh, for the existing right, plan. Right. Yeah. So in some sense, the Euclidean plane just doesn't have that fan. That's why we, we can't run this construction. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. You can't, can't run that construction. But topologically, you can, right? I mean, right. if you want just the topological tiling of the plane, right. 
then you can run this construction. They won't be realized by actual regular Euclidean polygons. Right. So, but they can have a topological construction. Yeah. Okay. All right, sure, sure, thanks. Okay.